Black Street Comedy Theater in Hollywood. It's actually Saturday night. Starring Ed Ackerman, Kurt Dietrich, Claudia Dolph. Leith Ganford, Joseph Limbaugh, Jeff Parker, Kevin Small, Jake West, and Steve Young. Musical guest, Genghis Kanja. And your host, Carlos Alazraki. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Carlos Alas Rocky! Sweetie, teeny, 
ice cream, and you can't, oh man, I think I got a bad batch. This is not the Angelina Jolie's Esty Bressy. This is the crack whore from Oakland. I'm just being, be careful with company. I, uh, I'm engaged, my fiance is right there. Visual quick is I'm 47 and she's 27, so thank you very yeah. much. Yes, I will be playing the part of Mio in my marriage. I'll take the blue pill. <laughs> it's pretty cool. The age difference is, uh, is, is okay right now, but if you roll back the clock 11 years, it's a really bad first date. <laughs> Ding dong, Laura. And I'm scared. Just pour yourself a glass of lemonade. Sunshine. I'm Chris Hansen, and we're doing a special on Predators. Oh, I didn't know. Here's the real math on, on, on my senior prom. This is the real math on my senior prom with my, my lovely uh, bride to be. <clears throat> hey, Carlos, man, class of 1980, man. You gonna dance with us or what? No, it's okay, guys. I'm gonna wait. Two years for my fiance to be born. <laughs> uh, all right, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> What's going on, guys? What's with the, uh, what's with the suits? Well, it's, it's kind of out of respect. Yeah, see, a lot's happened since the last time you guest hosted here, and we just wanted to express how sorry we were for your loss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that Gidget was a consummate actor and a dear friend. You two were probably very, very close. Yeah, yeah look, guys, it's true that I did do the voice for the Taco Bell dog commercial. That's true, but uh, I never really met the dog. I never met Gidget. So. Oh, come on. Come on, you had to have met the dog. I mean, the way you encapsulated the dog's spirit with your voice. I mean, come on, can you say the line for everybody? Just say it. Say the line. All right. Hey, apparently, I'm really excited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Me? Because a lot of people usually recognize me. 
Are you that guy in that Del Taco commercial? No, I don't do commercials. I played Eric on Who's the Boss. Yeah, I was uh, Samantha's love interest in the episode where she got a hickey. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, what can I get for you guys besides an autograph? It's an I. That's all right. I don't even know who you are, so I. Uh, my real name is Al Martin, and uh, I played uh, I played uh, Jonathan. Uh, I played Eric actually, and uh, as you know, I know. Uh, shh. Oh. I know Danny Pintaro. <laughs> oh. oh my God. That's right. Yeah. He played Angela's son. That is so cool. It's not really that cool. I just, you know. Hey, what comes? Does the chicken parmesan come with spaghetti? How many episodes were you on, Al? Just the one. But uh, Tony Danza, I call him TD. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> what I call him. What? TD says I was his favorite co star. Yeah. Uh, but Pintaro and I, we hang. We're homies. Okay. okay, I actually have another question, Al. So, uh, what comes with. Uh, with the fame? <laughs> what <laughs> does it? You know, when Pintaro and I hang, it's like a, it's like a pussy fest. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Isn't Danny Pintaro gay? Gay for pussy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, you know, uh, a lot of times people just want me to deliver my famous line that I delivered on the show. Oh my god, I want you to deliver your line. I want you to deliver You have to do it. Okay, all right, all right. Hey, Samantha, it's just a hickey. <laughs> I can't do it again. All right. Hey, Samantha, it's just a hickey. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, we, I, you know what? I don't even watch. We don't even watch the show. I so. do. You do? I do. Oh. It's, on, it's on Nick at night at 3 a.m. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I would love an autograph. Oh, all right. Oh, my hand is kind of cramped. I'm sure it's from writing down all the orders for the salad and breadsticks, right? Well, uh, from signing all the autographs yeah. outside. Uh, but I think I can pull it off for a beautiful fan like yourself. Oh, he's sweet with his fans. And uh, one for you too, sir. Okay. You know, I don't even. Can we just order? Oh, of course, ordering. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it reminds me of the time Pintaro and I were at the Abbey. Oh. Yeah, we're at the Abbey together, and the bartender gave us free Jaeger shots. Yeah, I had to drink Danny's because he hadn't shown up yet. But you just said you were at the bar with Danny Pintaro, so. Yeah, well, I, I sent him a Facebook message. I guess he was stuck in traffic, you know? We're Facebook friends, though, so uh, we're pretty close. Wow. <laughs> you are, like, a real celebrity. No, Janine, <laughs> Janine no, 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 Janine, stop encouraging him, all right? I mean, this guy obviously doesn't even know Danny Pintaro, so. Uh, we worked together on Who's the Boss? <laughs> Dude, one time. You worked with Danny Pintaro one time, and you know what? He was the least famous person on the show, all right? I mean, if you're going to brag about with, working with somebody, I mean, brag with working with, like, a Melissa Milano, uh, Tony Danza, even that older redheaded slut that played Mona. Danny Pintaro, oh, really? I'm just saying She is not a slut, sir. Oh Her name is Catherine Helmut, and she was practically my grandmother-in-law on TV. Seriously? <laughs> you know what? I want a new waiter. I want, hey, can we get a new waiter over here? I, I am so sorry about this, Al. I don't, you should not be treated this way. <gasps> no, no. You know what? What? Samantha, there's no hickey! Is he crying? Oh is he crying? Is he crying? He's a big deal, Connor. I can't believe he just did that. You're an ass. Come on, I'm sorry about that. What, what can we get for you? Thank God you're here, man. That guy needed a shrink. Oh my God. That was my exact line on growing pains. <laughs> and yes, I do know Jeremy Miller. <laughs> cast member Ed Ackerman. And I'm lead singer at Genghis Khan Top Frank Trank. And you might recognize us from the Capital One commercials that are currently running nationwide. That's right, we play Visigoths on the Capital One spots. I, I thought we were Vikings. No, we're Visigoths. <laughs> but we're Viking guys, you know, Frank, our Vikings! What the hell is a Visigoth? Um, the warrior guys who get into all the crazy hijinks at stores, banks, on the airplanes. We did one when we were baseball players. But I thought we were Vikings. We're not Vikings? No. You know, I don't even know. I'm not even sure what a Visigoth is. This would be a good time to just smile into the camera and wave. This is embarrassing. I know. <laughs> Hey, Vaughn. 
John, you wanted to see me? Uh, yeah, Paul, please have a seat here. Um, I'm going to get straight to the uh, point here while you sit down. Uh, listen, Mike has uh, charged that you are uh, creating a hostile work environment for him. What? How? Did you, uh, did you say this? You think Thompson will give up that contract? Fat chance. <laughs> yeah? You don't deny it. Uh, you, are you talking about fat chance? You said it again. Right to your face. <laughs> it wasn't anything personal about Mike. It's a common expression. Well, it was hurtful, and it made me uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure it did. Uh, when I came in, I could sense the elephant in the room. Oh, I am. <laughs> Shocked and disappointed in you. It's, it's just an expression. An elephant in the room. It was a mistake. An accident. I hope we can resolve this. Mike doesn't need any more workplace issues. Yeah, yes, I know you're busy with accounting and all their blubbering. Oh my god! You see what I mean? Blubbering? It, it means crying. I just meant they're complaining about the budget cuts, forcing them to trim off some of the flab. I do not believe you said that! Wait, 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 wait. Stop talking about his weight. <laughs> I am the target of workplace hostility. I, I'm not talking about you. W-A-I-T, not W-E-I-G-H-T. I meant hold up. Oh, so do you mean Mike would be hard to hold up? No, that's ridiculous. Uh, you're blowing this out of proportion. Oh, that is shocking. God, will you quit it with all the bro remarks? You're reading something into this that's not there. Let's just calm down and, and try and wrap our brains around this. Oh, wrap. So it, all, it would also be hard to wrap something around Mike. No, I, I'm not even sure what that means. Look, this doesn't have to be a big deal. What do you mean by big? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything bad. I have nothing but respect and admiration for Mike. All right. Well, I am issuing issuing you a warning. Okay. You don't. We don't need this behavior around the workplace. All right. So, Mike, can you uh, put this behind you and just focus on your workload? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, you know, I know you've bitten off more than you can. I mean, um, your eyes were bigger than your. I mean, you've got a lot on your plate. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, Jesus! Oh, fine. Fat, fatty, fat, fat, fatso, blubbery, fatso. I quit. <laughs> Why are you so fat? <laughs> I'm Acme Saturday Night Stage Manager Paul Durso. I was also in the Capital One commercials with Ed and Frank. We played Baseball Warriors. The, the commercials aired on ESPN and the MLB Network. Yeah, it's been fun uh, playing a warrior hum with these two. Visigoth. <laughs> Thank you. You mean we weren't Huns? No. No. Well, look, I know for sure we're not Vikings. What the fuck is a Visigoth? We don't know. Awkward. Yeah, so we should just look at the camera and smile, huh? And wave. Wave to. <laughs> He calls it stand-up comedy. You will laugh or suffer beheading. And now, the king. between a Frenchman 
And the cat... What? The cat knows it's a pussy! Huzzah! <laughs> between a Viking, a Visigoth, and a Hun. The Vikings were Scandinavian seafaring pirates and traders who raided and settled in many parts of the northwestern Europe area in the 8th through 11th centuries. The Huns were members of a warlike Asiatic nomadic people who ravaged Europe in the 4th and 5th centuries. And the Visigoths were a branch of the Goths who invaded the Roman Empire between the 3rd and 5th centuries AD and ruled much of Spain until overthrown by the Moors in 711. Oh, come on, guys, everyone knows this. I mean, the only similarities between the three tribes, and, you know, much like you three, is that they were all dirty, ugly, smelly, large, simple minded, thick headed, fat, dopey. Did I mention smelly? I should just smile and wave. That's fair enough. From the Acme News World Headquarters in Hollywood, this is the Acme News with Kevin Small. I am Kevin Small and this is news to me. An eBay bidder offered $4.6 million for a crypt located above Marilyn Monroe's tomb, or as that position is also known, the JFK. <laughs> they used to do it. According to a new survey, the average video gamer in the U.S. today is 35 years old. The typical adult video game player is overweight, introverted, and depressed. Another common side effect is virginity. Look at that guy, right? According to a new study, 90% of U.S. currency has cocaine on it, which means even though its value is less than ever, it won't shut the hell up and thinks everything is awesome. <laughs> Police in Nashville have created John School in an effort to try and rehabilitate men caught soliciting prostitutes. One man said, the classes are helpful, but if they want me to stop, they need to get my wife to start blowing me in the alley. <laughs> he likes it dirty. <laughs> Astronomers have found what appears to be a gigantic suicidal planet. The planet named WASP-18b is orbiting so close to its star that it's triggering plasmatides that will eventually destroy it. Friends say the planet is despondent ever since Venus broke up with him. 
When asked to participate in an intervention, former planet Pluto said, fuck him, I've got my own problems. <laughs> He's not a planet anymore. <laughs> Scientists have found that certain medications can increase the risk of falling. The use of long-acting benzodiazepine, easy for me to say, can make you 40% more likely to fall. On another note, I'm 100% more likely to fall with tequila. <laughs> can't handle my liquor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I can. Spanish re researchers have discovered that a sexually transmitted virus that causes cervical cancer is also to blame for half of all the cases of cancer of the penis, which begs the question, you can get cancer in your penis? What the fuck? And now it's time to wrap up the week in sports. Oh, shit. Did someone say rap? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear it now. Monday, they start up the U.S. Open. The fucking Andy Rodder can start that choking. Baseball sucks and it's got the wind tree. I only watch a World Series, a little league. The Michael Vick has not become an eagle. No way and in hell that should be legal. The NFL's the best and there ain't no doubt. Will somebody please knock this motherfucker out? You, that's my new bitches, I'm out! Quiet on the set. Action. Hollywood has a long and glorious past that most people never learn about. And even less people learn about Hollywood's bullshit past. That's why Time Life Books has put together a compendium of vignettes guaranteed to be 100% true Hollywood bullshit. Presenting Time Life, Hollywood bullshit. For example, you'll learn about the directing career of Earnhardt von Germanstein. He was so superstitious, he would only come onto the set wearing a dinosaur costume. And all his movies were about gypsies. And then there's Skinny Moore, the famous Hollywood actress who was made out of spiders and banned from pictures because of her scandalous trysts with Mount Rushmore. We've all heard the true stories about Hollywood, but now the bullshit stories can finally be told. Order now and we'll start off your collection with bullshit tales about directors from countries, followed by bullshit tales about actors made out of animals. We'll even throw in famous Hollywood pterodactyl. Each book is lovingly bound in leather. <laughs> Not real leather, though. Order now and we'll send you this authentic Oscar trophy from 1924 that we made in a factory. To order, just call 1-800-732-STAR-SKULL-MONKEY-FACE-HAT. That's 1-800-732-STAR-SKULL-MONKEY-FACE-HAT. Or you can carve your address in cement at Grauman's Chinese Theater. Or, as always, by putting your dreams in an envelope and getting a dragon to burn it with its fire breath. Order Time Life's Hollywood Bullshit today and get started learning the bullshit legacy of the past. Cut! Print! Check the gate. Walked into a bar, caught a lady up, what choice is? Talked a kind of dim, with old ladies, with old voices. Walked up to the bar, it was a strange little sight you see. I wanted up that whiskey, and the Duke poured the drink for me. Down in John Wayne, go! 
country with the cocaine in. People love their families, but it's the overstepping mirrors down in John Wayne country with the cocaine in. If you're by religion, then I'm sure that this ain't it. Come on now. Jesus built my hot rod playing loudly on the juke. I'm toasting up that whiskey and paying homage to the Duke. Devil dog kept dancing down the aisle right next to me. I just kept on drinking and turned that dance all into free. Down there, John Wayne country with the cocaine in. People love their families, but it's the overstepping mirrors down in John Wayne country with the cocaine in. You got fire religion, I'm sure that this ain't it. Bring it down for two weeks. Country with the cocaine in. People love the families, but it's the overstepping mills down in John Wayne country with the cocaine in. If you find religion, then I'm sure that this ain't it. Come on, John Wayne country down in John Wayne country. Down here, John Wayne country. Down here, John Wayne country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? Whoa. Be calm. I am from an alien world. I wish to conduct a few tests and return you unharmed. Well, is this an alien abduction? Because if it is, I'm cool with it. Man, this is cool. Yeah, I'm down with it, man. This is totally cool. Well, that is good. Uh, I wish to uh, draw a small blood sample. So we'll just take a moment. There, I've drawn your blood. Is that it? Is, isn't there going to be a probe? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no probe. Well, it, it's okay if there is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. I don't probe. <laughs> no, I, no, it's not that I like, want it or anything. I'm just saying, you know, it's just it's kind of expected. Well, there's no probe. In fact, I'm almost finished. Oh, what, what do you mean? No probe. You can relax. I will not be conducting a probe. Uh, okay, are, are you sure? Because it's kind of a well-known thing among humans that you guys, like, take people and, well, you know, probe them. <laughs> you will not be probed. Why not? Well, my mission involving you does not require a probe. But, but you've probed others before. Yes, on occasion. Okay, then well, why won't you probe me? I mean, oh God, is it me? Am I unprobable? <laughs> no, of course not. What's wrong with me? I mean, why don't I merit a probe? I mean, is it, is it my looks? Is it, is it something I said? We stopped probing last year. We have all the probing data we need. I've been waiting my whole life for this. I always thought I'd be probe worthy. I am sorry. <laughs> sorry. I mean, I've been to, I belong to every abduction organization, 
organization that I can find. All my friends are UFO enthusiasts. I mean, I mean, how? What am I going to do? How? What am I going to tell them? I'm going to erase your memory, so you'll tell them nothing. That's great. Well, without a problem, there's going to be no post-traumatic stress. And without post-traumatic stress, I can't get a book deal, and then I can't get booked on Oprah. We love Oprah, too. It was the number one baby name on my planet last year. God! Oh, please don't tell Brad Wilson, please. He will never let me hear the end of this. I mean, because he's always bragging about his probing. Brad Wilson? We had to probe him twice. Oh, God! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> God, he gets everything! Oh, please, man, I have never asked you for anything. Look, we've only just met. Look, I need a probe. Just, just a quick one. It'll be in and out. <laughs> well, if you really want to, I think I have an old probe on board somewhere. Oh, uh... <laughs> And I'm Leif Ganford. And this is an Acme News Break. Now for a segment we call Grandpa Would Have Whooped My Ass. With the help of a $250,000 reward, the founder of Papa John's Pizza Chain, John Schneider, 
was finally re reunited with the muscle car he sold years ago to help keep the family's business afloat. Okay, for this segment, mm -hmm. uh, I am going to play the role of John Schneider, yes. and Kevin is going to play the role of his grandfather, Correct. Charlie Small. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> hey, Grandpa, uh, check it out. I got my classic gold and black 1971 Chevy Camaro back. How cool is that? Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> what, why would you say, what? Uh, no, I bought a car. What you must be retarded to spend $250,000 on some piece of shit Camaro. It's not a piece of shit. It's a historical... Okay, look, and it traces back to the beginning of Papa John's. That's a stupid name for I a pizza it. place. I named it after my dad. Well, he was retarded too. Your son was retarded. Hell yeah, look at you. There ain't no way you come from my loins, boy, you long-haired hippie dope fiend. If I didn't know better, I'd say you's a pecker puller. <laughs> A pecker, but what the hell does that even mean? Don't you sass me, boy. I was in WW2. You were stationed in California. I will kill you. <laughs> I was on the team, goddammit, and I will beat you so hard that my belt buckle's going to have blood on it. Okay, 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 stop, stop. Break scene. Break God. Scene. Break scene. Kevin, Kevin, I, I'm, you're scaring me really bad right now. Yeah, no, he's pretty fucking scary. God, I'm so sorry. Sorry, was, buddy, don't, don't. Sorry I broke character like that. Yeah, Jesus. sorry, buddy. God, he's, how he's, did you put up with that? Ah, yeah, a lot of therapy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, buddy. He, he's, he's dead. He is dead. Yeah, not in my dreams. Oh, Jesus. That's been an Acme news break. It's okay. <gasps> oh, my yeah, God. being hot? Jesus, Chad, you just showed me like a hundred photos of your girlfriend on your iPhone. You kept saying, look how good she looks. Isn't she really hot? I'm just simply agreeing that yes, Karen is attractive. Settle down. There's not any fighting in this bar tonight, okay? You really look at yourself, Chad, all right? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Comment, that's it, man. You and me, outside, man. Oh, you're going to end yourself. You're going to end you. You didn't fucking help, man. You didn't help, all right? I'm going to end you, man. Yeah, you're going to end you. Oh, my God. Get off. Get off your law. There's no fight in my bar. He started it. Yeah, I know he did, Mike. And there's only one way to end it. Hank! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> showing you all those 
hot pictures of my fiance on my iPhone, and uh, I'm an idiot. So. Hey, yes you are, but uh, you're also my friend. Hey, man, I'm sorry. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. And, uh, thanks, Hey, don't thank me. Thank Hank Carter. <laughs> thanks, Hank Carter. Don't fucking touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, what, what's going on? Why are those men chasing me? All right, there's no time to explain. All right, you need to do exactly as I say. You need to pay attention to me or you are dead. Oh God, really? Maybe. <laughs> it is possible that I exaggerated the part about you being dead. What? For effect! All right, no, you need to listen to me. Okay? These men chasing you are trained assassins. They are highly skilled in the art of killing people. And they want to kill me? I don't know. All right. But they are chasing you, so what assume, could assume that, which is why you need to pay attention to me. So, so I'm, a, I'm a little confused. These men chasing me, are they going to kill me or not? Okay, look, if you do not do exactly as I say, these men, that are chasing you will undoubtedly blow up your car. What? Again, I am exaggerating. I doubt they even know what kind of car you drive. Why do you keep doing that? Because I am trying to help you. I need you to focus. But how about saying that? How about just saying, I need you to focus? Because words can be misconstrued. <coughs> your dog is dead. What? No! See? You misconstrued that! <laughs> Alright? I was talking about your childhood dog, not your current pet. You need to pay attention! Then stop bringing up things that don't have anything to do with what's going on! The year of 2009 was a tragic year for many people in terms of celebrity deaths. Big stars and little stars died this year, one tragedy following another, but one stands out, one changed our lives forever. This is the E! True Hollywood story of Gidget the Chihuahua. Gidget was the face of a fast food phenomenon. She was a small star with a big heart. She was so easy to work with. She, uh... She always knew where the camera was. Just right there, you know. A hero to the Latin canine community. She never forgot where she came from. At the time, a breaking news story shocked the world. 911 emergency. Gidget! Oh, she's not breathing! Is this a human, ma'am? No, it's my puppy! She was gone. In the next hour, we'll take a look at the star with the million dollar face and this pup culture icon's fall from grace. Benji, Lassie, Spuds McKenzie, they're all lightweights compared to her. Carlos Alizraki, voice of the Taco Bell Chihuahua Spots, remembers the tiny starlet. 
uh, this is harder than I thought it would be. I uh, remember the first day I met her, she pooped in my trailer. She always had a great sense of humor. Born under a taco stand in Tijuana, Mexico, Gidget Rosarita Consuela Parida Perez was just another street dog, but she was destined for something more. Fighting her way out of the illegal dog fighting rings of Tijuana, she crossed the border on the back of a coyote. She was discovered on the street out in front of Schwab's in Hollywood by casting director Jenny Tingle. <laughs> she screamed. She thought it was a rat. But it was my Gidget. Can I have a minute? But she wasn't just another pretty face. She had talent. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Yo quiero, she was amazing. She played a male chihuahua. She was the Hillary Swank of talking dogs. But at the height of her popularity, tragedy struck. Fame had gone to her tiny, big-eared, bug-eyed head. What began as an experimentation with begging strips led to a stint at Promises for a heavy snossages addiction. And the infamous sex tape leaked onto the internet of her and her stand-in, Dinky. The tabloids reported that she was throwing up her kibble to maintain her figure. I never saw it. She was set to make her comeback in Quentin Tarantino's 101 Reservoir Dogs. But before that could happen, on July 21st, 2009, she crossed the Rainbow Bridge to dog heaven. Seriously, again, I just want to say I'm really, really sorry that I sat on her. Hasta luego, Gidget. <sighs> Te amo, Gidget. Te amo. This has been E! True Hollywood Story, Gidget the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Highway to heaven. The men's a turn back to hell. Three more bottles of whiskey. Send your ass right back to jail. Buy my ticket out of pay my toll. Paid up wrong with all of my soul, yeah. Long past the end of the city that town Holding up a whiskey bottle, burning up a turn by it Well, I gotta pack the bags, I gotta leave this town I got a cheap bottle of wine, I try to choke it down Well, it must have been the bottle of moonshine to wrap up I got a hole in my head the size of Texas Well, I ride, buy my ticket, I to pay my toll Pay the wrong with the hole in my soul, yeah Keep the wrong at the end of the city that town Holding up a whiskey bottle, burning down the train by Yeah, yeah Sign says hell yeah Sign says hell yeah Sign says hell yeah You ready for some guitar? Anthony Sancho! Back to back, you gotta leave this town. I got a 
she probably want to try to choke it down. Well, it must have been the bottle of moonshine that wrecked us. I got a hold of my head inside the Texas. Will I ride? Five my ticket out to pay my toll. Paid up from it all of us all, oh yeah. It seems as long as I get to the city of that town. Holding up a whiskey bottle, burning and turning by it. God, I'm old. <laughs> I am Kevin Small, and this is an Acme News Break. Please welcome our senior music and lyrics correspondent, Ed Ackerman, for a segment we call Between the Lyrics. Hello, Kevin. Yes. What's up, Kevin? I'm going to read between the lyrics of the classic 70s tune, Blinded by the Lights by Man for Man, since, well, after all, I am a musical genius and all. This one should be pretty easy, my friend. All right, Ed. Here is your first lyric to read between. Hit uh, me. In the dumps with the mumps as an adolescent pumps his way into a hat. Mm -hmm. What exactly does that mean? Well, Kevin, listening to those lyrics, clearly they're talking about depressed, sick teenagers that sit around all day and have sex with hats. Okay, that's kind of disturbing. It is, all right? it is. Uh, how about this one, Ed? How about, with a boulder on my shoulder, feeling kind of older, I trip the merry-go-round with this very unpleasing, sneezing and wheezing, the calliope crashed to the ground. Right, right, right. I understand that line. Yeah, they, uh, they have asthma. The teenagers have asthma from the summer months while humping hats, and oh. they broke their pipe organ that was used in the 1800s on showboats and in traveling fairs, actually. A calliope. I know what a calliope is. So, that, so that's really what that means. Yep. And then it goes on to sing, Blinded by the light. Wrapped up like a douche, another runner in the night, blinded by the light. Um, Wrapped up like a okay, douche, actually, another... Actually, 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 Ed, it's, what? It's, it's revved up like a douche. It's, it's not wrapped up like a douche. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone... That's, Kevin, that, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh-oh. Really? You, you wrapped up a lot of douches in your day, have you? <laughs> Do you, do you even know what a douche is, Ed? Well, I just, I'm just saying, I don't think those are the right lyrics, so... <laughs> well, I mean, do you know anything about this song? Kevin, real? yes, of course I do. Look at me. I'm clearly in the parking lot of my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, okay? I mean, I'm wearing a rock and roll shirt. Look at this. It says rock and yeah. roll stuff. I got rock and roll bling on my wrist. Yeah. That just right there is pretty much infutable evidence, Kevin, that I am, in fact, a musical genius when it comes to rock and roll and its lyrics, my friend. Wow, <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like there's a little bit of sunlight left there. <laughs> yeah, well, Cleveland's so cutting edge, it's like 7 o'clock Sunday because they're so rock and roll. So all whatever. right, all right. Well, did you know, did you know, let me ask you this. Did yeah. you know that that song was actually written and recorded by Bruce Springsteen in 1973? But what didn't gain notoriety until Manford Man's Earth Band re-recorded it. And the original line was cut loose like a deuce. There were no douches. Ed, no douches. What? No douche. I didn't know that. I, obviously. Kevin, I'm kind of lonely. I'm going to scour this uh, parking lot, try to find a hat. All right, that's gross. <laughs> that's really, really gross. I'm Kevin Small, and this was an Acme News Break. Okay, uh, Jasmine? Mm -hmm. 
um, I would she hook up with his family and then broadcast it on the internet. Because that is what my cousin Lola did to this guy, and like, he was so jealous, he like took her back, and then it was really weird that he took her back because at that point he was dating her mother, <laughs> and I am just saying.
threw up in my mouth. <laughs> oh well, you changed your mind. Well, 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 I thought you left. You knew James Dean and Sal Minio? You're amazing. Amazing? You haven't seen me with my pants off. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> comfortable with your cooking. Okay, so if it's not a big deal, I guess I don't have to do 
do it, right? Exactly. No, you have to do it. It's just not a big deal when you do do it, which you have to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, that's, I don't, I'm not singing, so that's, I'm just not going to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Great, so you, uh, you want to ruin my birthday. How is not singing ruining your birthday? I don't want to ruin it. But... No, I'm not saying it's a good thing. 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 No, I'm not